from their eyes a shadow of the colossus based fic chapter four solitude of the swordsman gaius looked up at the sky which is most of what he did anymore it had been his choice to remain on his, this solitary locale an elevated structure in the middle of a vast lake it was true that the lake wasn't as big as the ones Hydrus and Pelagia called home, but it was enough to ensure his solitude. It was true that the solitude was self-imposed, but it was what he deserved for his crimes. He sighed, looking up at the sky, to the lands above. That had been his home before he followed Dorman. Back then he had been idealistic and believed Dorman had planned to improve things. This had been his first clue once he thought about it, that something wasn't right. Things weren't really bad back in their old land. He was young and foolish to believe Dorman. Dorman had made him and many of the others believe that his way was to be the proper way. He convinced them to fight for his cause, and he realized his folly too late. He had led the charge on the ones in power, and during the charge he saw the truth, but it had been too late for his correction to have any effect. Because he had been part of the charge, he was banished to this world. After the banishment, he walked the land until he finally found the lake with this lone platform. For years, he remained there, looking up to where he was certain his old home was. He even remained there when all the little people had arrived. Shortly after their arrival in the strange lands, he had heard them wandering about, looking at the place he had made his home. He was brought out of his lamenting when a voice entered his head. It was Malice, another one of his brethren who had been fooled by Dorman in their old land. Be on the alert. Dorman is going to try and break free. He has been sending messages to the little people beyond our lands. Gaius just sighed. It was happening again. His thoughts went back to the past, when the little people had first come to the land. When they had first arrived, he had heard that Dorman was being kind to them. Dorman had even asked them to forgive his mistakes had helped the little people. That had been right, and at the time he forgot his self-imposed exile and helped the little people. He had been sad to find out that it was just more of Dorman's treachery. It was a kind that Dorman had perfected. He never lied to them. He just omitted certain truths. When he told the little people they could live in the lands, he never told them the cost. Dorman demanded tribute, and he and the other Colossi had been tasked to collect that tribute. At first the tribute wasn't large, like a small livestock animal, but it kept getting higher and higher. What was worse was when they couldn't pay, Dorman wanted the Colossi to destroy their dwellings something the Colossi had never done on purpose. The fact that they could easily flatten the little people with a stray step made them avoid that. It had been at that point that Gaius knew that Dorman was truly up to his old tricks, and so Gaius approached Malice. Malice had been one of the first to realize that Dorman was not who he claimed to be. Malice had even tried to warn the little people in the beginning, but they didn't listen. 
they soon realized that Malice had been telling the truth, and they fought back against Dorman. Even after all that, he kept to his solitude. It had been wise at the time, when Malice had been confront, confined to a stationary existence. At least he thought it had been wise. Shortly after that, Dorman praised him for returning to the flock. After that, he again left his solitude and made his way over to Malice's prison. He had been joined by others, including Ballas and a few others. Shortly after that clandestine meeting, Dorman had been stopped, his essence divided into all of the Colossi remaining. He was proud that day. When the little people left, and thanked them all. That day he swore never to give in to the dark essence in him. Inwardly he thought, I will never betray the Colossi. I will never serve Dorman again. He had even made it his primary reason for never leaving his solitude. He also swore to bash any followers of Dorman into a pulp. At that instant, he heard Malice speak to him again. I know you would not. Just be alert. Dorman has somehow bewitched a little person into helping him break free. Valus and Quadratus are gone. If you defeat this little person, they will be restored. Hearing that bit of news took Gaius by surprise. After all that, Dorman had put the little people through. Why would any of them want to help Dorman? That one would have to be a fool, or desperate. In all likelihood, the person had to be a fool. He could not fathom that one of the little people would willingly help Dorman for any reason. His thoughts were cut short when he heard something. Something was approaching him, his place in the lake. He could hear it swimming, which meant it would soon make its way up the ramp. Maybe if he pretended to be resting, he could lure the attacker into a false sense of security. Soon, he sensed the figure approaching. It approached slowly, obviously being cautious. This figure would not be fooled by his ploy. It did not matter. The little person could be easily squashed by his sword. He got up and looked down at the person. Like him, the figure held a sword. But it only reached the top of his foot in height. It would not take long to get rid of the little person. He approached the figure, noting the figure was not moving. Maybe this would be taken care of quickly. He raised his sword and slammed it down. Just before it connected, the little man jumped away. That move frustrated Gaius. The figure had to have some skill in fighting to have avoided that move. He turned to make sure he was facing the man again. At that moment, he saw the sword, and it looked familiar. It almost looked like the one used to defeat Dorman long ago. If it was that one, it was good all the sigils now on his body were high up, where the little person could not reach them. He moved toward the little person again, raising his sword to strike. The little man remained in one place, a place that looked different from than the rest of the plateau. It did not matter. The little man would die under his huge sword. He raised it up again and brought it down. Again the little man jumped aside and his sword hit the ground, but this time was different. When his sword hit the spot, a tremor went up his arm, and he felt something shake loose. 
Then everything changed. He looked at the arm and noticed something had broken off. Then he saw the little person running up the blade of his sword. He quickly lifted his arm, hoping to throw the little person off. Unfortunately, he was too late. The little person was climbing up his arm. He kept moving the arm, trying to throw the little person, but he kept climbing. He felt them climbing on his head and tried to shake them off. Then it happened. A splitting headache. The man was attacking his head. He really had to get the little man off of him. Hopefully the fall from the height would kill the man. He then felt the man lose his grip. Hope swelled in him, for the man would fall to his death, the fool that he was for following Dorman. Also, if the man did still live after the fall, he could squash him flat. He started to look around, looking at where the man should have landed, but he saw nothing. A slight, sickening feeling started to swell in Gaius. Could the little man have managed to catch on to his stomach region? Where the other sigil was? It couldn't happen like that. Could it? He received his answer with a stabbing pain right where the other sigil was. It was followed by another, and everything started going dark. He could feel Dorman's essence flowing out of him. He was dying. The little man had foolishly killed him. He felt himself fall to the ground, and he hoped that as he fell, he would squash the little man. It would at least end the man's misery, if the little man was aware of what was happening to him for doing this. It was the last thought he had, as the darkness consumed him. Dorman watched with great delight as he saw Gaius fall. Gaius had turned on him and chose not to return to him after the second betrayal. Some of the others had, but it was the ones who were left that did not. They had killed all the loyal ones that were enforcing his wishes on the little people. But it had been Gaius that had gone to malice first. Now that vengeance had been taken care of, he could step up his plans. He could let his foes know he was returning. While that thought gave him such joy, he wondered who he should taunt first. He did not have enough power to taunt those that cast him out of his home world. Malice was already aware of his plans and was trying to warn the other Colossi. The only one he could taunt would be the fool, Iman. He would need to form the perfect taunt for him. He then looked at the little man that was destroying the Colossi for him. His essence had just entered the man. More of that man's soul was dead, and his skin was getting paler. Soon more physical changes would begin. The shadows would make sure the man was in the temple. However, as they moved the man, he knew he had to take some precautions. Those would involve making sure the man does not forget why he started this. He turned his attention again to the woman. He could sense now that she would be key in a backup plan. Her soul, once he pulled it back to her, could be manipulated. It would be the key to returning to his home world if his main plan failed. However, he would need to make sure she could get up there. The horse would be key. He then let out an inward chuckle, just as the third statue exploded. Hedra would be next, the next colossi to defeat. He wondered how his young puppet would handle the challenge of Phaedra. He would wait and see.